James Conley got on the bike. And it's St. Patrick's Day here in New York. And it's snowing. And we're gonna go up here, 745 Fifth Avenue, to the David McKay Gallery. And we're gonna take a look at Augustine, a centennial exhibition. Well, I've been anxious to see this show for about the last two or three months. Uh, one of our viewers from Brazil, Claude, had given me a heads up and said I had to come by and see the show. So we'll uh, take a little sweep around here. So this piece is titled Don from 1970 and it's 67 by 108 inches and uh, this is one of his famous themes. There's another early piece that he did that was uh, called the, I think the Outskirts. So you've got the, uh, the hooded figures driving around in the suburbs. This has got feet sticking out the back. This is one of the more colorful pieces in the show. It's on a, uh, on a Naples yellow ground. It's got some orange and green. Along with this pink and red. Oh, that's a great sun. Well, I think uh, Phil Augustine is maybe one of the most interesting painters of the last century, at least here in New York. It's called Inside. This is charcoal on paper, it's 1969, 17 by 23 inches. And uh, in a lot of ways, his, uh, his whole career kind of uh, followed the course of the aesthetic changes happening in, in America over about a 50 year period. It's titled 2JS 1977, 68 by 104. And uh, I'm just glad I had a chance to see this show. It was a great retrospective at the Met probably about six or seven years ago, and it was before I started doing the calm report, and uh, I always kick myself. I wish I would have been able to video that. This is an earlier piece. This is from 1964. It's titled The Year, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting to compare his uh, his pain handling when he was still working in his kind of what some people have called abstract impressionistic style but uh, it's got a lot of gray in there and it is not really the kind of pure color the impressionists would have been working with this is 78 by 107 inches. This is titled Plotters, 1969. Oil on panel. It's a beautiful little piece, and I've heard or I've read things where Gustin talks about feeling like he was one of the people under the hoods. There were a lot of things happening in the art world in those days. I have a friend who's a German artist named Wolfgang Petrick, and uh, he was studying in Berlin in 1958 when 
the uh, New American Painting Show that was curated by Dorothy Miller. Came there to the uh, Hochschule für Kunst. And uh, he said that a lot of the young German painters at the time, people like Baselitz and Lupertz, saw that show and were very much influenced. This is Drive 1969, oil on panel, 26 by 24 inches. Now, Philip Guston, I guess, was born in Canada but grew up in Los Angeles. And uh, there's some very tragic stories about uh, his father who committed suicide and I guess Philip discovered his body. And uh, I guess at the time the Ku Klux Klan was kind of a big threat over Southern California. This is titled Shoes, 11 by 14 inches. And uh, when Gustin went back to figuration from his abstraction, I think a lot of it was uh, related to cartoons. People like George Harriman and Crazy Cat. This is titled Book. Gouache on paper. So while he was in LA, he was hanging out with uh, kids at the school of was manual arts and met some other people like uh, Jackson Pollock and uh, Reuben Kaddish. This is kind of an odd uh, mixture of his uh, iconography. It's like his little uh, heels or his little shoe forms have got hair growing out of some of them. I wonder what that means. This is untitled 1980 acrylic on board. This is one of the late pieces. It's also untitled. This is a beautiful piece. This is Discipline, 1976. And uh, this is really a great example of the classic uh, Gustin figurative work. Let's look at some of his brushwork. This is 80 by 100 inches. Well, Raphael Rubinstein recently wrote an article about uh, neo-expressionism and uh, how it had pretty much been forgotten by the uh, art institutions, the museums, curators, and uh, in a lot of ways, I think Gustin is a perfect example of someone that. Uh, I was kind of asking the same questions at the uh, end of the 60s that a lot of people were asking again at the beginning of the 80s with uh, the advent of neo-expressionism. This piece is titled The Canvas. Sixty-seven by seventy-nine inches. 1973. Oh, 
here's another major piece. This is titled Waking Up 1975. This is 67 by 129 inches. Well, I remember coming and visiting the David McKay Gallery when I was up at the uh, Hotel Barbizon and seeing a couple of the very last Gustin shows before he passed away. And uh, so this was the late 70s and I think Gustin was maybe one of the most important painters for young artists at that time. And as I run around out in places like Bushwick, I talk to a lot of uh, young painters that still find Gustin as a great inspiration. This is titled Forms on Red Ledge. It's another beautiful, beautiful work here. Now I think at some point uh, Augustine won a prix to Rome and while he was in Rome he spent a lot of time looking at uh, the work of Morandi and uh, also de Carico. And a lot of people say that his uh, kind of tonal painting was influenced a lot by Morandi and his still lives. And that's, that's kind of a nice little still life right there. is untitled and uh, I think probably Philip Gustin maybe G. Michel Basquiat are two of the most popular contemporary painters that America has produced in the last uh, 30 years and uh, both of them went through periods of uh, being up and down as far as the uh, critical uh, community was concerned. Oh, this is a beautiful little piece and I love the green. This is untitled. 1979 oil on canvas, 48 by 42 inches. And uh, I've heard a lot of people kind of uh, criticize Gustin's palette and people referring to it as having a pink eye because it's got a kind of a, an Indian red base, but this is a great example of him going in and using that brilliant green. Getting that great mileage out of that. What do you think those are? Garbage can lids? This is Musa. Musa. It's a portrait of his wife. It's 1975, 48 by 70 inches. And uh, he does have a wonderful touch with this paint. These kind of uh, loose hairs are wonderful gesture in there. Oh, it's also interesting, he's got this little uh, white margin here on the bottom of the painting, which uh, kind of recalls the work of Jasper Johns, or even uh, what Bryce Martin was doing at that time. finish this little tour looking at this piece. This is titled Alfie in a Small Town. And uh, 
I think in a way this captures all of the great things that people love about Gustin. It's got his kind of humor, sardonic humor, the grotesque figuration, the grubby human presence. Well, the composition's great. He's even got some blue in there. Centennial Exhibition here at the McKay Gallery. 745 Fifth Avenue. Thank you, Kate. I'll take you down.